Hi, I'm Jonas, a winner of multiple national and international science Olympiads. I'm privileged to have had support from the most amazing tutors in my hometown, and that's why now I am so passionate about helping students all across Britain to succeed in their exams. In this podcast, we go through easy to follow theory and examples to provide you with confidence and skills in the subject. Join me in the journey of making your exam experience a success story. Welcome back to our lovely podcast. I'm really happy that you're listening to this episode. And before we start, I would like to do two things. First, if you know someone who could benefit from listening to this episode, please share it with them. That's how we can support more students with the preparation for their exams. Secondly, if you love listening to our podcast, it would be great if you could leave a five-star rating or a review. So let's learn more about calculating pH. To simplify the measurement of the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution, pH scale is used. pH is a negative logarithm with a base of 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. Most of the pH values are in between 0 and 14, yet occasionally some of them are outside of this range. Hydrogen ion concentration in a solution can be found by raising 10 to the power of negative pH. So let's see an example of a problem for this theory. 20 centimeters cubed of 0.25 moles per decimeter cubed nitric acid solution is mixed with 10 centimeters cubed of 0.75 moles per decimeter cubed nitric acid solution. What is the pH of the new solution produced? If you are unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. The next topic we're going to revise is ionic product of water. Although in many reactions we assume that water does not dissociate, a small fraction of H2O molecules split into H plus and OH minus ions. The multiplication product of the concentration of H plus ions and the concentration of OH minus ions is called the ionic product of water. The value of this measure depends on the temperature, at room temperature, and many general questions. This multiplication product is 10 to the power of minus 14. The ionic product of water can be simplified in a similar way to pH by obtaining pKw, which is the negative logarithm with a base of 10 of Kw, which is just 14. The question that relates to this theory is, the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution is 2 times 10 to the power of minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed. Find the concentration of hydroxide ions in the solution at room temperature. If you are unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Now let's go through some theory about dissociation constant. Dissociation constant is a measure of the ability of an acid to dissociate. The dissociation constant is found by multiplying the concentrations of the two dissociated ions, A- and H+, one of which is hydrogen ion and dividing the result by the concentration of the undissociated acid HA. The dissociation constant can be simplified in a similar way to pH by obtaining pKa, which is the negative logarithm of the base of 10 of Ka. For acids that have the concentration of HA much greater than the concentration of A-, the initial concentration of HA before the dissociation for the calculations can be taken. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. Provide an equation that defines a dissociation constant of hydrofluoric acid. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. The next topic we're going to revise is buffers. A buffer is a solution that responds to changes in pH or concentration by adjusting its composition to return to the initial pH value. Buffer solutions can be grouped to weak acid plus its salt and weak base plus its salt solutions. An example of a buffer is blood, which ensures a relatively constant pH by using an equilibrium between H2CO3 and HCO3-. Buffers shift an equilibrium in reversible reactions to counteract an introduction of new ions. When hydrogen ions are added to a weak acid plus salt buffer solution, the equilibrium shifts towards the left, which is undissociated acid, 
when the base is added to such buffer, the equilibrium shifts towards the right, which is dissociated ions. When hydrogen ions are added to a weak base plus salt buffer solution, the equilibrium shifts towards the right. When the base is added to such buffer, the equilibrium shifts towards the left. Now let's mention a question that could be asked in this topic. Describe what happens when a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution are added to an ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate buffer. Now if you want to access the solution and the answer for this question, use the link in the show notes. So that's the theory and questions for today. I hope you found them useful. If you want to access all the study resources that we have on our website, go to studysquare.co.uk forward slash all, which is A-L-L. I hope you have a great week ahead. Stay tuned for the next podcast episode and take care. Thank you for listening to Maths and Science Revision with Jonas. If you'd like to get hold of our exam revision guide, go to studysquare.co.uk forward slash PDF and let's turn your exam experience into a success story.